we've known each other for 30 years. He and I both worked at Elf Aquitaine, and uh, Styrolf was our first polymer modified asphalt a long time ago, I, probably 30 years ago. And he's grown up, had a bunch no, of kids. No, no so yeah, well, yeah, but you were only about this tall when I first <laughs> met you, so. But anyway, he, uh, he's uh, been around the world, done a lot of research, worked for a lot of great companies, and uh, now at WRI helping us understand what we need to do with pavements. So I look forward to him talking about whatever subject he's going to say. So welcome, JP. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Bonjour. That's how we say that, you know, when we are French cowboys. Okay, so what I'm going to present now, hopefully, is more short term than uh, what was presented by Everett, and, um, and hopefully more applicable as well. So I, I'm going to try to convince you that at least that's what <coughs> it is. So I'm going to present the, uh, the results. So, and, the most important findings from the NCHRP projects 960, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 960 uh, about uh, cracking resistance for binders. And we're trying to tie this to the binder structure to understand what's going on and why the, the current specs are not doing what they're supposed to do in terms of uh, ranking uh, binders according to their uh, cracking resistance. So I want to uh, acknowledge my co-authors. So uh, Michael Elwardeni, who is the one I, who actually did the most of the work, and Gail King, uh, who is, uh, uh, is the kind of the guy that will force you to think out of the box. All right, so the outline of the presentation, I uh, will talk a little bit about why this project and, and the main outcomes. And then I will end up with a summary and perspective. So the context, and I already presented this slide many times, so you, you're probably familiar with that. But th that comes from uh, Asphalt Institute Orbitum document, and it shows basically what a refinery is regarding to asphalt. So it's really focusing on asphalt. So back in the days, you know, uh, during the sharp era, so basically all asphalt were made by using one crude oil, and then after the uh, proper distillation, so atmospheric uh, and, uh, and vacuum, uh, and that was presented, by the way, very well by um, Pavel yesterday. So we would end up with a product that was, if it had the right properties, would be uh, asphalt. Of course, other things were starting to, uh, to come into play, and uh, polymers, for example, were already coming. And, uh, <laughs> Um, the uh, Mike in this introduction uh, just mentioned that yes, we were already working on polymer modified asphalt back then, but it was not as big, of course, a market as it is today. But then uh, later on, uh, people are starting to blend crude oils for economic re economic reason, and then adding more additives like PPA, like uh, Reob, like uh, cross linkers, and all kinds of things. So now the system is getting very much more complex. And then, of course, there are lots of uh, um, um, units in, in the refinery that also produce residues uh, that can be used in the asphalt pool, so like uh, solvent deasphalting, uh, of course, uh, air blowing. And then now we have the conversion residues, which are used for bunker fuels, for example, that will not be uh, allowed to be used when they are high sulfur. In, uh, because of IMO 2020, and maybe some of them may come to the uh, asphalt pool. So I will talk about, about that later. So in our project, because there are so many changes going on, um, the panel asked us to try to encompass everything in, in, in this project so that we can uh, look at the, the products, the, uh, the binders which, which are made today, but what about the binders that will be made tomorrow so that we don't come up with a new spec that will that will uh, you know, be useful for the, the binders from 20 years ago. But the, the idea is to, to, to rank the binders from today and tomorrow. So we included everything. And in our projects, so we have 50 different binders. So that's a lot of binders. 
and they represent pretty much all combinations you can think of. And for half of them, we have still data. All right, so as I already mentioned, the specs that we have, they were made like in the 90s, and they were good for the asphalt that were made in the 90s. But they are not so, uh, so relevant for some of the binders which are made today. And the problem is uh, we have, uh, uh, in some places, cracking like this occurring. And there are lots of question marks about the binders. So the, the, the project is trying to understand this, the, the relationship between these, and capturing by specs the, the problem with the binder in order to, so that's 960, to prevent this from happening. So is that true that there are issues? Well, we did a survey uh, with the, the help of NCAT, and yes, uh, that's what we got. You know, uh, there is transverse cracking in some places, surface cracking, uh, block cracking, rubbling in many places. And uh, Ontario was uh, involved, and, and they said that they had them all. But OK, that's what it is. So in the meantime, the industry is not uh, you know, just waiting, and uh, the industry at large, including DOTs and so on and so forth. So the uh, Delta TC come into play, and, and in fact, uh, nowadays, there are quite a few agencies which are already using uh, Delta TC, and that's a survey done by the Asphalt Institute last year. So the question is, is this the answer? If it is, well, OK, let's use Delta TC. But Let's take a look at it. OK, so here is the, a list of uh, the binders that we use. And there are not all of them here. And it's only uh, 31 of them out of 50, because um, for whatever reason. And this is the, uh, their PG ranking. So that's just regular PG. And that's the low temperature PG. So we are not looking at the high temperature in this project, because it's related to cracking. And uh, what, what you can see here, that uh, so they are color codes, you know, like all the reds are polymer modified, and you see that they are all performing very well according to the PG grade, uh, grading system. And then uh, you have uh, unmodified, real modified, uh, um, solvent deasphalted, uh, uh, blends, uh, PPA modified. There is one even bio binder which has no asphalt in it. Okay? It's all bio based with polymer in it. And then there, there are oxidized binders and uh, air blown and, and so on. So you see this type of ranking. OK, now, what happens when we look at the uh, delta TC, so which is a relaxation index? It's measuring the relaxation uh, properties of the binder. And, and now we want this to be uh, as high as, oh, sorry. Uh, how can I get back? Um, so that's the PG, all right. And so na now the higher are, are good and the, the, the low are bad. And you see that, for example, polymer modified, which were all on one side, now they are kind of evenly distributed here. So there is a different ranking for polymer modified as well, and also for all other bro products. And that's after 20 hours PAV aging. And if we go to 40 hours, the ranking keeps, keeps changing. And if we, uh, on top of that, uh, after 40 hours, if we also include physical hardening, so lo uh, long-term conditioning for 72 hours at low temperature, that changes again. So there are lots of things going on. And the ranking that we have now has it, nothing to do with the uh, early one with just PG uh, specification. So we see a lot of changes, but what and particularly with aging, and also with modification, polymer modification. But what does, it, what does it, this mean? Is that something that we should worry about, or is this important, and what, what, how can we explain those changes? So that's what a big part of the project was about. Um, we are not the only one who are looking at this. And um, uh, Jerry Ranke and uh, Andrew, I think it was in, in the room, um, they did a, a study and they used one binder source and they, they aged it and they, uh, at different levels, different, and they, they measured delta TC in, on, the y, uh, in, uh, on the x axis and they uh, plotted the, uh, um, the colloidal uh, 
stability index, which is uh, coming from the, uh, the composition of, of, the, of the asphalt, and that's the, the ratio of aromatics plus resin divided by saturates and asphaltines. Sorry for those who are not chemists, but chemistry is important. And uh, they found a very nice relationship. So, okay, means colloidal instabi uh, stability or instability uh, is, is the thing to, to look at. But remember, only one by the source. So in, at, in uh, WRI, we have developed the SAR-80 um, um, uh, fractionation system, and I uh, already presented that many times, but just, to, just as, a remember, uh, as, as a reminder, so um, from this, we can get different subfractions of aromatics and also asphaltines, and we have also the saturates and the resin. And we've uh, done a, a modeling study. We know what type of molecule can be attributed to, this, to, to which fraction, and uh, we can, from that, also measure a colloidal instability, in instability index. So we take the, the, the inverse of the, the, what uh, uh, Jerry did. So that's the saturates plus uh, asphaltines divided by aromatics plus resin. So the higher this uh, colloidal instabi instability index, the more instable is the, the, the system. So this, this shows, uh, you know, uh, results for a bunch of binders, but just to show that we can do uh, differentiate binders. So when we take the delta TC that we measured in, uh, in under 960 and we plot it as a function of the colloidal instability index, we have this type of relationship. It's not a strong correlation, right? 0.64. But I think it's important to, to spend some time about and, and think about it. What do we have here? So there, the, again, there is the color code for the polymer modified. So you see all the polymers on one side, part of the, of the curve, and then there are all the others. And when we look into, uh, I would say, more details, um, so what, what we find is, of course, by definition, the high uh, colloidal in, uh, instability index, they, they give low delta TC. So that's kind of the general trend. So this is in, in, uh, in agreement with the previous study by, from Jerry and, and Andrew. Um, the the uh, lower are usually so what we would call the, the balance blend. So this is kind of what we are looking for. But then, what about those guys here? Because now we are, we are um, breaking the world record. It's uh, between minus 30, minus 35. And I, I love competition, so I, I love numbers like this. You know. Yes, it's a world record. So what kind of product is that? Okay. So what we find out is that when we look at it, those are hard grade asphalt. And in fact, we took that one because it's used in Europe to make uh, high modulus mixes. Well, okay, it's not on the surface, so that, that, sh that should work if the climate is not, uh, not too tough. But it's highly structured binders. So those are gel, so, uh, sort of gel-like uh, binders. And then there, there, there are those guys here, and those are, out of, are kind of outliers, and we love outliers, okay? So what are they? They are waxy. They are waxy binders from the Texas uh, crew. So, that means that wax also plays a role there. And those, uh, like I already said, so those are gel-like binders. So now we're starting to, to, to see what's going on. And in fact, uh, if we look at the structure of those binders under a microscope, so this is the, uh, by AFM, uh, we see that the, the waxy binders, they have this type of uh, thing, and uh, uh, this was done by Troy Pauli when he was uh, with us at WRI. And uh, so it, this shows those structures, and we think that the, the, the crystals can in initiate cracking, and uh, that's not what we're looking for in, in, in asphalt. But this delta TC was already uh, discussed by um, my predecessor, Ray Robertson, at WRI, in, in the early 2000s. And what he found is that, yes, so he, he didn't call it delta TC, but he did the calculation. And uh, what he found is that waxy materials can have very uh, low delta TC, and then others like airborne and as well. Okay, if we look at uh, other materials like REOP, for example, so REOP also changes 
the, uh, the, um, the microstructure, and we, we see this type of uh, uh, you know, things happening, and also gives a very uh, low delta Tc. Now, if we uh, discuss a little bit about the um, conversion residues uh, coming from uh, uh, IMO 2020, uh, they are very instable from a chemical standpoint. And uh, we, we did some on purpose uh, at the lab. And uh, what we find out is that if we compare, for example, the base asphalt, so those are two base asphalt, and then we uh, vis vis break them and uh, we, we um, submit them to a thermal uh, um, a process, then we make them more unstable. And uh, this is looking at the cooking index, which was developed for food oils, and uh, that's lower value indicate possible cracking in the refining process. So when we do this, things happen, and those are not uh, chemically stable in terms of oxidation. And they, they also show very uh, special behavior in the, in, the, in the GPC, for example. They, they don't have the, the same type of asphalting that will uh, agglomerate. And then if we look at the black space, uh, they also have a very uh, special um, um, a behavior which is very elastic and, and brittle and does not relax very well. And if we look at the uh, delta TC, so they are very bad in terms of delta TCs. And what is even more in interesting is that if you take that one and you polymer modified it and you go to very low delta TC. So please don't use those kind of bases to make polymer modification. You're going to be losing your, your money for the, for the polymer. So if we focus a little more on, on the PMAs, well, PMAs, uh, as, as you all know, so they can be compatible or incompatible. And uh, we can look at it under a microscope. And they are multi-phase structure. So basically, a poly put the polymer in, in, in asphalt. It swells with a lighter molecule of the asphalt. And then the rest of the matrix is enriched in asphaltene. So that's what this says. And this is, uh, depends on the concentration of polymer, it depends on uh, all, uh, uh, I would say, molecular structure of the polymer and also on, on the composition of the, of the asphalt uh, base. So what we are looking at, they're trying to get is this level, the, this type of product. So this can also look at with different uh, technologies and with uh, infrared microscopy, we can even measure the amount of polymer that is in the nodules, polymer nodules, and what, the, what is the amount of polymer with outside this. So we can do very uh, quantitative uh, analysis, and we can look at physical blends, and we can look uh, also at crosslink blends, and we see big differences. And in crosslink blends, it's very much homogeneous, and this has been known for some time, but this shows, uh, we say, more quantitative data. By the way, just uh, one, one comment. Cross-linking is very important. And that was uh, presented by, the, by uh, Brian early this morning. It's the, the most used non-polymer additive, according to the survey. So pretty much everybody cross-links today. But so pretty much everybody is on, under that situation, which is good. Um, we, we looked at, is there a relationship between the, the, uh, the microstructure and the delta TC? And, and yes, we found one. So that's by data mining, and I don't have time to go into detail. But th this shows like very uh, homogeneous binders crosslink, for example. But they could be not crosslink. Those are crosslink. A very, I would say, uh, less negative delta TC. Whereas th this one, which is very, uh, I would say, heterogeneous, has a very low delta TC. So there is a relationship there. All right. What also plays a role, and I already said that, but uh, if you change the, the base asphalt, so here there are two uh, sets of binders and with two base asphalt. One is uh, the blue one, the red one. The red one has a very low delta TC, the other one not so low. And then when it's modified, of course, there is a, a, a lower delta TC with the, with the polymer, but it's highly impacted by the base asphalt. So when you make a polymer modified asphalt, be careful what kind of base you use. Okay, so uh, we, we did more data mining, and uh, just to confirm that what we already saw is that 
when you start with a, with a base asphalt and you add polymer to it, almost every, every case you will get a lower delta TC. So that means that we have delta TC is not giving the, um, the proper ranking for polymer modified asphalt because 5% polymer is supposed to work better than 1%. And, and we are saying just the opposite. So there is something wrong here. So we need something else. We need to be able to capture the, the polymer uh, modified asphalt strain tolerance. And by the way, uh, asphalt binders are the only, in, in my, um, my knowledge, it's the, asphalt binder is the only material in the world which is not characterized in terms of cracking. Why? So we're trying to address that. And uh, we looked at other uh, parameters like Glovero, and the Glovero parameter does not work at all for polymer modified asphalt. And that was presented by Charles Glover himself when he, when he presented this. So there is no relationship between cracking and uh, Glovero for polymer modified asphalt. It works fairly well for unmodified, doesn't work for polymer. So we looked at, okay, in, in the early, um, to propave specifications, there was the uh, direct tension test. And that was to address polymer modified asphalt. And for, for some reasons, it's not being developed as much, and there's some issues with, with reproducibility, robustness, everything. So we tried to find a, a surrogate for that. And uh, we looked at uh, what was available, and the, the one that we found most available is the ABCD test. So I, I guess you're, you're familiar with this test. It's kind of doing like the TSRST on binders. And that was developed by uh, Sang Soo Kim a long time ago, and he did some studies showing good ranking for polymer modified asphalt. So we propose to use this test in, in, the, in the new specs, but it's, it's just a, propose, a proposal, a, a proposition at the moment. And uh, there are uh, many things which are uh, included in, the, in this test. Uh, first of all, the coefficient of thermal compression is included in, in the test. And that controls the, the volumetric changes, which is what is happening when, when the, 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 the binder is, uh, is uh, submitted to low temperature, it shrinks. Uh, it also measure, it's also impacted by the urological properties, so it's hidden, but it's part of it. The strength is, uh, is, is part of it. And the glass transition temperature, which is a, a fundamental property. And, uh, this, this uh, also uh, is, is related to this test. So we did some, some ranking using this, uh, the critical temperature. So that's the temperature at which the, uh, the, the binder will fail. And uh, we, we took some, some data from uh, the Minnesota, and you, you guys have seen this uh, before, with the MN1-4, which, is, uh, which was real, uh, modified, which cracked very badly in the field. And then th there are other binders, and that one, for example, is polymer modified and uh, performed very well. So we did the ranking, and what we found out that it ranks pretty well, except for real. So it means that there is something else here that we need to understand. And we, we found out very easily that, in fact, real has a glass transition around minus 80 degrees C. That's why it softens uh, asphalt very well. And that is what uh, this is uh, showing here. So that means that this, uh, this test works for polymer modified, and I will show uh, more data, but that's not the, the whole answer. What, what needs to be uh, accounted for is the modulus itself, because uh, with Rehub, we, we softened that so much that it became very, very, uh, very, very soft, so very, very low modulus. So we, we came up with that, with a new parameter, which is another delta, so it's not delta TC, we call it delta TF, F for failure, and that's taking the, uh, the critical temperature of S, measured by DDR, minus the critical temperature coming from the uh, uh, ABCD test. And when we do that, then we get the, the good ranking uh, for um, the uh, MN1-4 uh, MN1 and and we give the, the right uh, credit for the, for the, the polymer modified asphalt. So then we, we ranked all the binders from, from, the, from the study, and this is um, delta TC ranking. 
so with polymer modified uh, in, in, in many places. And then this is the, uh, the delta TF, and all of a sudden, all the polymer modified, pretty much all, not all of them, but most of them, are showing very good results. So they are at the right place where we expect them to perform. So um, it, then we, we say, okay, let, let's plot delta T F versus delta T C. And so this is what we found. And then I told you that we have field data for half of them. And we are able to uh, see that all the, the best performers were in this area, the poor performers were here, and then there are some critical binders. And those are the ones which are important. So those, they have a very good delta, T, uh, uh, delta TC. We don't need to worry about them. And we don't even have to, to measure the delta TF. For those which are very, very bad in delta TC, we don't need to measure delta TF. The question is those which are critical. So if we look at them in two more details, the seven person SBS modified, they are all up here. That's why, where we expect them to be. And then here we have a beast broken residue, here we have a hard grade, the ones which are, which are bad. Then if we take at a given level of uh, delta TC, so if we look at that, for example, a minus five would be rejected in most states. But if we look at the, the performance, some of them have very good delta TF, and we have field data showing that, yes, they perform well. So this is giving the, the credit that uh, we're looking for, for polymer modified. So if we go back to this uh, slide that I already presented, which showed that uh, adding more polymer was bad, according to delta TC. Well, if we look at delta TF, it goes the other way around. So now, polymer modified are performing well, just as they are supposed to do. So this is going in the right direction. So uh, I'm kind of late, but in summary, um, there have been huge changes in asphalt binders since Sharp. Most production and formulation have their own chemical structure and, medical, uh, and mechanical features, so we can figure out with them. Uh, specification do, do not always capture performance, and I'm re uh, referring to the uh, superpave specs and, and, and some, new, uh, some new parameters. Specification edited is not always, are not always performance edited, because you can pass a spec because of, a, of a, an additive, but if the spec is not uh, good, then uh, you, don't, you can fail in terms of performance. Uh, quality inconsistency can lead to early field damage, and also storage issue, I didn't talk about it, but that's of course a very important point. Compatibility and oxidation sensitivity are the main issues. We can cope with that. With, with the right approach, with the right tools, and that, that can be uh, useful for, for the industry to uh, uh, formulate binders. So let's focus a little bit in, in the, uh, on the compatibility. It's a very complicated notion, and particularly when in case of polymer modified asphalt. Uh, it's multi-dimensional, it's uh, multi-scale, uh, it's influenced by a lot of factors, including base salt, process, and everything. It's related to corridor instability, but not only. It's also related to waxes, to polymer swelling, and the change in corridor instability because of polymers. It affects storage stability and the properties, and particularly the cracking resistance. Linear viscoelastic rheology captures aging very well, uh, and that's the case for the global row parameter, delta TC, but even G star divided by sine di delta. So pretty much all of them, G star does but it does not capture cracking resistance, particularly for polymer modified asphalt. So failure test seems to be a good job, and we have ABCD, which is available. Maybe not the best test on earth, but that's the one which is available. The parameter delta TF uh, measures the cracking temperature relative to, to modulus, and it seems to be uh, giving the good credit um, for PMAs and uh, doing uh, giving a logical uh, uh, ranking. Co uh, combining delta TC and delta TF seems promising for universal uh, specification framework. And uh, a, a lot of this has been uh, validated in our study. Of course, it's not the end of the, of the story because uh, it's still, although it's wide study, it's still limited. So more work probably to, uh, but I think we're getting there. In, in the perspective, so we are looking at what is the, uh, how can we give 
we, we, are, we will never come up with a, sp a specification on the composition of a binder, but we can give guidelines to the industry and just, you know, and this is kind of what we are heading to, and, and I'm not going into detail, but we're looking at the various parameters that uh, like the PG, uh, colloidal instability index, delta TC, delta TF, and how, how those change, changes in a negative way or in a positive way when considering some uh, composition uh, parameters. So this is data mining, still in progress, but uh, I think uh, we are going to where we're supposed to go. So with that, I want to acknowledge a whole bunch of uh, uh, participants in this study. Uh, of course, NCHRP, and particularly the panel, which was uh, very helpful to uh, force us to, to go much further in, in, the, in the thinking and in the interpretation of the results. Uh, the team that, that is uh, involved in it, and some industry partners, because some of this was the data was also generated uh, in, with uh, other partners. And of course, the team, and I thank you, and uh, sorry to, be, uh, to talk too much, but thank you for your attention. I, I uh, invite you to come to the Pearson Conference this summer. It's gonna be as warm as it is today here. But don't come now, because it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit difference. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions? A couple quick ones if we want to. Huh?